I've been away for a while, but I'm back. Are y'all ready? Look, I know I'm a Sonic game early, but that's besides the point. I'm Riz, aka The Rizardon, and I'm back with my series, My Time With, where I'll talk about media that I grew up with, or sometimes media that I've experienced recently that I spent a lot of time with. Just to be clear, the goal of this is not to provide any type of formal review, but to share my thoughts and opinions on what I experienced while playing or watching whatever I'm covering. I'll also add that creating a video on something is my recommendation in itself to at least give it a try because these take a ton of time to play, watch, write, and record. So without further ado, let's get into my time with Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure is famously known as Sonic's first full adventure in the world of 3D. It was originally released on the famous and long since put to rest console of legend, the one and only Sega Dreamcast, in the year 1998, first in Japan. It was then released the following year for North America and Europe, and it since had, I think, just one remaster and a bunch of ports. Of these releases, my first experience with this game was the GameCube version during the late 2000s. I've been a fan of the Sonic series for as long as I can remember, and I have a ton of fond memories playing the Genesis era games with my older brother via the Sonic Mega Collection. And we had some modern games too, like Sonic Heroes, Sonic Rider, Shadow the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic Unleashed. Also, all for the GameCube, except Sonic Unleashed, that was for the Wii. Really benefit from the whole Sega going third party situation, and we didn't even know it, now that I think about it. We spent a lot of time getting all available unlockables, endings, and just playing the games repeatedly. Besides this, Sonic Mega Collection was the gateway to, to discovering what I thought were secret mystical Sonic games. These games being the Adventure series, which you only learned of from the trailer for Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, that was included in the movie section of Sonic Mega Collection. Now, there was no trailer for Sonic Adventure, but my kid brain could put together that if there is a two, then there is a one, and my search was on. Also, by my search, I mean my parents' search, because I was like seven, eight, or nine, had no money. Long story short, it turned out some of my cousins who are around the same age as me already had Sonic Adventure on the GameCube. So I played it for the first time over their house and I was in love with it. I loved the way it looked, the way it felt, the cheery music, and the fact that I could play a Sonic without tails or knuckles attached, and extreme gear, and that it was in 3D. It had me sold. I managed to get them to let us borrow their copy for a while, but had never completed it before. I had to give it back. Um, I'm being dramatic, but it had once again become a legend to me. I did kind of forget about it when my parents came home one day with our very own copy of Sonic Adventure 2. But I'll get into that another time. I didn't rediscover Sonic Adventure again until 2014 through the Steam version. I had gotten it on sale with a bundle for some other Dreamcast games. I played it, I loved it again, but it was kind of a one and done thing as I was discovering so many other games around that time and never gave it the attention the kid in me thought it deserved. So here I am, fixing that mistake. Let's get into the game. The game is structured like this. You play as six different characters experiencing the same story through their own point of views with their own goals and some unique experiences sprinkled throughout. The overall plot is that Eggman has discovered Chaos, the God of Destruction, and has somehow gotten control of it. His main goal being to gather the Chaos Emeralds, feed them the Chaos, and destroy the game's main hub area, Station Square, to build his own Robotnik clan. I don't believe him going by Eggman was popularized back then. Um, it could be a translation thing, I'm not sure. Regardless, our main trio, Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles, come across Eggman and Chaos by complete coincidence. Regardless, they jump in to take action to stop whatever he's doing, simply because they know Eggman is never up to anything good. The main cast also features Amy, Big the Cat, and E-102 Gamma. I wouldn't call the roles minor, it's just that their involvement seems even more coincidental than Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles'. I will cover the characters in their own sections that will be timestamped throughout the video and also in the description. There will also be spoilers throughout the video, but the game is super old, the story itself is not deep, and I honestly believe that the main strength of this game comes from the character arcs that I'm about to get into, starting with everyone's favorite boy, Sonic the Hedgehog. The game starts off with Sonic running around Station Square, jumping off rooftops, breaking people's windows, and he says his famous line, Oh yeah, this is happening. 
I think he was simply enjoying life at the time. But that's also what he always does. Anyway, this is quickly interrupted by some militarized cops showing up on scene to apprehend the creature known as Chaos. They're inefficient, as expected, and run away. Sonic shows up, quickly defeats Chaos, and immediately starts talking shit. All the while, Eggman is watching from another rooftop, also talking shit. As you skip ahead in the game a little bit, Sonic is enjoying the amenities of the local pool, which just so happens to be about 10 feet away from a literal beach. His relaxation is quickly interrupted once again as he hears a familiar sounding plane come by and is woken up from his nap. It's everyone's other favorite boy, Miles Tails Proud. Anyway, Tails is actually crash landing and he crashes at the beach, so Sonic takes it upon himself to go check on his little brother. This leads into the first stage of the game, Emerald Coast. It's a beautiful beach featuring white sand, blue skies, bluer water, and a chill yet adventurous song playing throughout the level. After meeting up with Tails, we learn that he's figured out how to harness the energy of the Chaos Emeralds and was using one to test out his new plane model. Big shout outs to him for figuring out clean energy at the age of 8. Anyway, Sonic and Tails head to the Mystic Ruins area, which is the secondary hub of the game and where Tails' little lab, hut, whatever, home area is located. On the way to Tails' area, they run into Eggman formally. They beat him up and somehow still lose Tails' emerald to him. After Eggman's victory, he proceeds to talk too much and tells our heroes his plans in full and how the Chaos Emeralds will be used to bring Chaos to full power. So now, if the mission of the story wasn't clear, Sonic and Tails are out to get the Chaos Emeralds first and slash or stop Eggman before he can do it. This leads into the next levels, Windy Valley, which is in the Mystic Ruins area, and Kissinopolis, back in the city. However, after gambling the days away, Sonic and Tails are ambushed yet again by Eggman and lose their emeralds. They're just slacking. <laughs> after Sonic and Tails are done stating their annoyances and frustrations, they get moving again. Warp the climate of the Mystic Ruins area and go snowboarding for another emerald in the ice cap level. Afterwards, Sonic and Tails run the knuckles who's been tricked yet again by Mr. 200 IQ Eggman. So of course they get into a fight, Sonic doesn't seem mad at good old Knuckles, but he's definitely annoyed. That's kind of his thing throughout the game, which is relatable because I'm pretty sure he was just trying to take a vacation. Having to fix Knuckles' mistake, we're left fighting Chaos 4, where Chaos is quickly defeated yet again. Who knew that the power of jumping off lily pads and playing in water would be the water monster's weakness? Anyway. Sonic and Tails split off from Knuckles to chase Eggman who's just summoned his egg carrier. It's actually another hub area too. So to get there, Sonic and Tails have to go through a mandatory section where you play the minigame Sky Chase. Here you use Tornado to use a reticle, blow up robots, bombs, dodge bullets, keep your health up, don't die, good job. <laughs> this is all pointless because at the end of the level Eggman pulls out the big guns, literally, and blast Sonic and Tails, and they come crashing out of the sky, separate. Sonic literally hops out of the sand, which he was laying in head first, and his first thoughts were not, oh wow, I'm alive, but is Tails good? Before he can process this further, we get an introduction to Amy, who bombards Sonic with love, and also a request to help her protect a bird she found that's being chased by one of Eggman's robots. Again, <laughs> before he can even process what's happening, Said robot appears and Amy is distracted by the Twinkle Park amusement park opening up. This is another fun level that features a miniature game which is essentially just racing down a hill into the actual level which isn't too bad either. And this level also leads into the next one which is right next to it, Speed Highway. So Sonic loses track of Amy in the Speed Highway which he's really annoyed at because she left him. But he quickly chases down the baddie that's kidnapped her and proceeds on a chase through Mystic Ruins again after Mr. Robo gets beamed up with Amy and Birdie in hand. This brings us into the Red Mountain level where Sonic is running after the Egg Carrier and thankfully meets up with Tails in his brand new plane right as Sonic runs out of ground to run. He's happy to see his little buddy, proudly calls him Champ, and gets straight back to work. Dynamic duo type stuff. Here we get Sky Chase Act 2 and successfully in parentheses, <laughs> make it on board Eggman's base. I say in parentheses because Tails Goofy ass didn't even include landing gear on this plane. Like how you missed that man. 
After the rough landing, Sonic's main priority at the moment is to save Amy. But first, we have to deal with a shape-changing aircraft, introducing us to another level, the Sky Deck. After successfully making it through the deck, Sonic and Tails arrive at the scene of Eggman attacking Amy and her bird, obtaining yet another Chaos Emerald from the bird's comically large necklace. Eggman calls upon our next playable character, E-102 Gamma. Sonic promptly defeats him to Amy's panic. She says that he's a friend. Sonic's like, okay, I guess. <laughs> but he lets it slide and keeps it pushing. We still got Egg Boy to deal with and the ship started to crash. I actually kind of forgot why the ship is crashing. Anyway, hot on his tail, as always, we meet up with Chaos 6 and Big the Cat. Chaos is still light work and seems to be destroyed once and for all. Also, Knuckles is here now. <laughs> Eggman hauls ass out of there down to a forest in the Mystic Ruins. Sonic follows in the most insane way possible. He just plummets out of the sky and goes squash in stretch mode to detect the fall damage. He might be the ultimate life form. He just might be. Anyway, a mysterious light shows him the way into the Lost World level where Sonic gets a lore dump on some, some of the history of the chaos. He got instruction from a mysterious echidna named Tikal, who's transported him into her memories. There are child bodies all over the ground and everything is on fire. Sonic doesn't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what the hell's going on. But now he's being transported out of the lost world where he conveniently sees Baldy McNose here escape to his land base. This man has assets on assets, I'm telling you. Anyway, we're in the final stages of Sonic's story now. The final egg, which leads directly into the final boss of the story. The Egg Viper. After losing yet again, Eggman tries to take us out while he's crashing. He fails, of course, as that is what he's doomed to do for eternity, or until Sonic Forces happens. As far as Sonic is concerned, Eggman and Chaos have both been defeated, and he can chill out once again. It's a bit of an abrupt end as Eggman makes another getaway, and Sonic and Tails link back up to let the credits roll to Sonic's theme song, It Doesn't Matter, which I think perfectly summarizes Sonic's character throughout the game as a reluctant hero. The entire song is great, but the lyrics are truly made for Sonic. To me, it tells how Sonic is and has always been a selfish character. He doesn't do what he does to be seen as any type of hero or villain. It's purely because it's what he thinks is right and what he should be doing. He's not easily influenced by others and could care less what others think regardless. It also tells how regardless of the time, place, or event, he will never give up these ideals to his and his friends' benefit. The song is supported by some small character moments throughout the story. He cuts his vacation short to go fight some mysterious monster, stops his relaxation time to go check on Tails, who he ultimately knows will be alright, and he trusts him. He goes up against Knuckles, even though they're both friends because Knuckles isn't seeing things his way, but he isn't malicious about it. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. And he's going to do what he wants to do regardless of who may get in his way. It just so happens that Knuckles was actually in the wrong in this situation and unfortunately got in the way of Sonic completing his goal. Sonic's ideals can also be seen in his interactions with Amy, Big, and E-102 Gamma. Mainly the way that he's carefree and the way that he judges people or situations. Easily able to come to understandings and de-escalate when someone he trusts tells him new information. Very much a forgive and forget kind of guy. Now, out of everyone else, Tails' story is almost completely identical to the events that Sonic goes through because he was literally there throughout the majority of Sonic's story. His adventure only features five levels that are a shorter version of the stages Sonic went through, these being Windy Valley, Casinopolis, Ice Cap, Sky Deck, and ending with Speed Highway. Let's get into his story and his changes. So going back a bit to Sonic's story, after the two fall from the sky and get separated during the first egg carrier chase, Tails decides that he needs to do more to be able to reach Eggman and help Sonic. He needs a Chaos Emerald to build the Tornado 2, which he finds in the Mystic Ruins sandboarding minigame. Yeah, there's, there's a ton of minigames everywhere, but this one's exclusive to Tails. He also gets his own trip to the past thanks to Takal, where she also info dumps on him. So once he's done witnessing her trauma dumping, he makes the tornado too and sets off to find Sonic at the end of Red Mountain. They immediately head after Eggman and successfully board the sky deck on the carrier. 
This is where the next split in their stories happens as Sonic entrusts Amy's safety to him while he goes after Eggman for the last time. So he flies Amy down from the sky with his own two tails because remember he crashed the tornado too and left it up there and they safely land in the city. Now this is going to seem ridiculous but if you're keeping up with just how quickly the events of the game happen you'll be alright. So as Amy goes off on her own, Tails sees Eggman crash around the corner after getting thrashed by Sonic yet again. Eggboy is a sore loser and decides that he's just going to bomb the city anyway and still build his little Eggman land over. He immediately fires said missile into the city, but it turns out to be a dud. Eggman <laughs> makes his way to the missile that's landed in the speed highway level. I guess to manually set it to explode? I don't know why he would need to get close to it. I, I don't know. But after a moment of believing in the Sonic that believes in him, and thus himself, Tails beats Eggman to the missile. This leads to Tails' final boss fight and the true final beatdown of Eggman. This takes place in the area between the station, so there are a lot of people there to witness Tails' biggest moment of the game, his victory over Eggman. This was the moment where Tails finally realized that he is and has always been capable of doing just as much good as Sonic. Tails returns to his little shack in the Mystic Ruins where he meets up with Sonic as they run off, doing the credit roll to Tails' theme song, Believe in Myself. Now, as a younger brother, I was always delegated to the role of player two, regardless of the game. So Tails has always been one of my favorite characters because of this. I remember really resonating with his story since he was on a journey to come more into his own as a person and realizing that he cannot do this by continuing to live in Sonic's shadow. He's smart, knows what he's capable of, and has complete trust from his allies when it comes down to getting stuff done. In the game, we see this mostly encouraged by Sonic as he gives Tails praise after almost every situation and trusts him completely with his and Amy's safety. Now, again, onto the main theme, believe in myself. It's very on the nose, which I don't think it's a bad thing. It's honestly what allowed me to really understand the character arc in this game as a kid. Not that I necessarily knew what a character arc even was back then. Essentially, the song covers Tails' feelings of wanting to be the best that he can possibly be, being trusted and counting on by his friends, and realizing that there are things that he can do and things that only he can do. It's very upbeat, it's uplifting, and it does a great job of bringing this depiction of Tails to life. And honestly, it's one of my favorite characterizations for Tails. Next up, we have the main man himself. Knuckles the Kitten, everybody's favorite loner. He was born by himself. That's why he stays that way. Anyway, Knuckles' story is actually the starting point of all the events in the game. It starts with a scene of him relaxing on Angel Island with the Master Emerald, contemplating his duty and why he has been tasked to do it. Knuckles' meditation is quickly interrupted by the Master Emerald being shattered and chaos emerging from it, immediately attacking Knuckles and fleeing. The consolation prize for being jumped is that the island is now also falling to the ground because the Master Emerald was the only thing keeping it afloat. After crashing down in Mystic Ruins, Knuckles quickly begins his duties as the Emerald's protector and begins his search for the Shattered Pieces so that he can restore the Emerald and the island back to the skies. Knuckles' story takes him through five stages, the first being Station Square, which introduces us to the mechanics of Knuckles and his playstyle. We follow the direction where the marker blinks the strongest until we find all three emerald shards. Throughout all the levels, the shards will be underground, in enemies, and cleverly hidden in random hidden areas. I've always been a fan of the emerald hunting gameplay as it's more explorative in nature than the regular action stages. It's a little bit easy in Adventure 1, but it was heavily improved in Sonic Adventure 2. Anyway, let's get back into the story. So after Station Square, Knuckles makes a visit to the casino. Bets it all, loses, and then gets granted a vision by his echidna ancestor, no relation, to call. Like the other characters who get to run through uh, Mystic Ruins before the chaos disaster, Knuckles happens upon to call, begging her father to not steal the Emerald's powers, to start wars, and dominate other people for their version of peace. After being extremely confused about what's going on, we awaken outside the casino to also see Sonic and Tails unconscious from when Eggman gassed them and stole their emeralds. I always thought this was a little silly scene, more so because Knuckles didn't even care about what they had going on. He was like, huh, these guys are here too. 
So after going on with his life and continuing his search, Nux runs into Eggman with his freshly obtained Chaos Emerald. Now, if you don't know, Knuckles is extremely gullible and trusted. So despite Eggman literally sticking his water goblin on us, Eggman is able to convince Knuckles that Sonic is after the Master Emerald so that he'll maybe slow Sonic down while he continues his evil schemes. Now when Knuckles gets this information, he's actually surprisingly level-headed about the whole thing, just wondering why Sonic would have anything to do with it. Alas, we must continue the search. We head back to the Mystic Ruins, get some cool shovel claws so we can dig underground, and gain access to the next stage, Red Mountain. Now, I don't know what went through Knuckles' head while he was doing this literal single stage, but upon going back to the main hub area of the ruins, he runs into Sonic and Tails. He mistakes Sonic's green Chaos Emerald for a piece of the Master Emerald and immediately attacks. Now, this scene should be familiar because this is the third time we've gone through it. I skipped over with Tails, but this is the third time this, is, this has been gone over, okay? It's just that this time we get that little chunk of perspective from Knuckles. Here we fight Chaos 4 once again, but it's Knuckles. After defeating it, Knuckles splits off from Sonic and Tails because he still has stuff to do and trusts the boys to handle the Eggman issue. Knuckles' next level is the Lost World. After the usual hunting, Knuckles gets another vision from T'Pol where she's speaking with the Master Emerald, or rather, Chaos in the Master Emerald, I believe. She's seeking guidance and assistance from Chaos to prevent the Echidna from going forth with their plans. However, it doesn't seem like Chaos can do much to help from within the Emerald. After this, Knuckles awakens in front of the Master Emerald, Altar, dazed as hell. Despite this, he continues on and restores the current shards back to the Master Emerald. Seeing that it's only partially completed, we realize that we still need to collect a couple more pieces until it's 100%. To give our guy a hand, the Master Emerald does something that I think it's literally only ever done in this game. It gives Knuckles a 4K image of where the remaining shards are located, which are on the Sky Deck, Eggman's carry. If the Master Emerald has done something like this before in the comics, please feel free to let me know. But as far as I know, this is a one and done ability. Anyway, one of Eggman's robots, E-102 Gamma, conveniently just finished Red Mountain right next to the Emerald Altar and inadvertently leads Knuckles back to the Egg Carrier. Here, as I said earlier, Knuckles gathers the remaining pieces of the Master Emerald after playing with the ship's controls and causing a ruckus. Here we get one final T'Kaw flashback where everything is on fire, they couldn't have made their move on the Master Emerald, T'Kaw's on the ground distraught, before anything can be explained to Knuckles, T'Kaw charges towards the Master Emerald and the flashback ends. It's literally nightmare fuel for Knuckles, but he brushes it off once again. He's just a stone cold dude. Still aboard the egg carrier, we run into Sonic after his fight with Chaos 6. Sonic heads off to do his last two stages of his story, but to Knuckles' surprise, Chaos 6 has returned for game padding reasons. So, we quickly defeat Chaos 6, just like I have all of his other forms, <laughs> and it seems to be done for real this time. Knuckles has a little dumb here though because I'm pretty sure he just left those six emeralds on the ground of the carrier as it was crashing out of the sky. Oh well, not his problem. After the egg carrier crashes, we return to the master emerald, restore all the pieces, and restore the island back to its place in the sky. Good job team! So after a brief cutscene meant to show the raw rendering power of the Sega Dreamcast, we're met with another scene of Knuckles pondering his role as the guardian of the master emerald. As he thinks of his eternal duty, the flashbacks that he's seen, he's come to terms that he may never know why he has to do this, but that it might be for the best if he didn't know. He's found his peace on his island once again. You the credit roll. Now y'all know I gotta talk about Knuckles theme, Unknown From Me. This is one of my favorite Sonic songs in the entire series. It's one of those things as a kid that led me to heavily believe that Knuckles was definitely a black character. Not that it's even an argument now, it's as undeniable as the Earth's rotation if we're being for real, but let me move on. Unknown for me is pretty unique among all other songs in the series as I believe it's the only rap slash hip hop song in the series that is a main theme for a character. I could be wrong, if I am, let me know. But besides that, it has two performers, Marlon Saunders on the singing vocals and Dread Fox for the rap. Another thing that stand out for the song is the incredible bass. It just, you hear it throughout the entire song, if you really just listen to it, it's just always there. It's beautiful. 
and this song has honestly everything going for it for me i'm not sure what bills they had to do but they were paid they were probably paid too much to me this song perfectly captures who knuckles is even going back to the genesis area to sonic frontiers the most iconic line is the first one here i come rougher than the rest of them the best of them tougher than leather everybody knows that one immediately we know that this dude is extremely confident borderline cocky when it comes to his strength and what he's capable of he's just unstoppable you know in his head i guess it can't really be cocky if it's true right another line that i like that shows his similarities to sonic is i'm fighting my own mission nothing's gonna stand in my way he's just as focused and as strong in what he believes that regardless of who or what it is it's not gonna stop him this is probably why the two butt heads so often they're just two cocky jerks that fully believe in what they're doing at all times i love it all right team we've reached the halfway point of diving into the character story notice how i say of the character stories Anyway, from here on out, they will be extremely light as they don't have much content as the big three who already didn't have that much going on. So next up, we have Little Miss Amy Rose herself. As a reminder, her story starts a little bit before Sonic crashes from the sky after his and Tails' failed attempt at boarding the air carrier for the first time. Amy's story actually has some hidden depth to it as far as what she's getting into outside of where we see her and Tails and Sonic's story. We start off with a scene of Amy walking about the city with her weekly groceries, one full bag that is two thirds her height, while she's reminiscing about the good old days of kicking it with Sonic. She was not kicking it with Sonic at all, she was being rescued the whole time. Her fond memories are quickly interrupted as she sees that a huge ship is blocking out the evening sun. Then suddenly, a small bird with a comically large necklace crashes into him. Stunned and dazed, she picks up the injured bird and starts running away from big old Eggman robot. Finding refuge in the nearby burger shop. You know, we can get barbecue bacon burgers and whatnot. Alright, let me stop being dramatic though. We exit the burger shop and Amy runs into Sonic. Sonic doesn't match her excitement at all when seizing her. As a matter of fact, he's more confused than anything and probably has a concussion because he just fell out of the sky <laughs> into the sand head first. After Amy suggests that he look after the bird she found because Eggman is after it, he runs off. After chasing him down, she catches him in front of Twinkle Park. Immediately forgetting about the immediate danger she is in, she aimlessly wanders into the level where we're introduced to her tactical espionage game. Now, Amy controls very similar to everyone else, except that she's extremely slow, she cannot spin dash in any way, nor homing attack. All she has is her trusty hammer, her levels are a bit of on the long side, but I think that's fine since she only has three of them. Throughout the level, she's running away from that same big bad nick that's chasing her down from the bird. Throughout the levels, you have to utilize the hammer to stun the robot, project yourself forward and higher throughout various platforming sequences, and hide when necessary. I will say as a kid I wasn't a fan of her gameplay but it's definitely grown on me. I appreciate the variety in gameplay styles that it'd be a bit pointless if she was capable of all the same things as like Sonic. Getting back into the story, Amy loses Sonic and seemingly loses the robot. Except she didn't lose the robot at all and he's right behind her. <laughs> Our girl gets spirited away kicking and screaming for Sonic. He's a bit too late and the next thing you know Amy is in prison aboard the egg carrier where she meets E-102 Gamma. Now, E-102 Gamma demands that she hands over the bird to Amy's refusal. She then proceeds to reverse interrogate Gamma, probably making him short circuit and convinces him to release the two of them from their cell. She got this robot becoming sentient, pondering thoughts of compassion, friendship, and all that other good stuff. Birdie is also strangely comfortable with approaching Gamma. What a weirdo. During the prison break, Amy is forced to play one of Eggman's awesome games, whack a -Sonic. It's a fun little game where you have to get 2,000 points to continue forward in the story. We also get two cool rewards, Lore and the Hot Shelter level. 
Tukal shows Amy her memories of meeting Tukal for the first time. This is also where Tukal meets Chaos for the first time. Amy awakens in Eggman's luxury emptied pool, thinking that she's just having a weird dream. So she makes her way to this deck where Eggman attacks her and Birdie, stealing the comically large necklace that Birdie has, revealing a literal Chaos Emerald. I don't even understand how heavy the Chaos Emeralds are, or rather how strong the bird is. I guess Eggman utilizes them for a reason. So Eggman commands Gamma to attack Amy, Sonic, and Tails, but Amy quickly defuses the situation. She saves Gamma from Sonic's beatdown and gives him a pep talk that really gets his gears turned. We'll get into that in a bit. So after the scuff, the gang splits up as Tails takes Amy back down to Station Square, Sonic goes after Eggman, and Gamma goes off to who knows where. Amy goes about her day, talking to her bird friend about how she should try to be more independent instead of relying on Sonic all the time. She also happens to see the inside of the bird's necklace, which reveals a family photo. Who took the picture? Who gave it to the bird? Who made it into a necklace? We'll never know. Amy goes off on her newfound mission to reunite Birdie with his family and travels to the egg carrier crash site where she goes through the final egg level. After completing the level, we find the two birds that were shown in the bird's necklace. The celebration is cut short when the most persistent robot to ever have been created interrupts the reunion by punching the absolute shit out of our bird friend. Filling Amy with rage, she stands up for herself and destroys the robot in battle with her trusty Pico Pico hammer. Surprisingly, our bird buddy rises up and gets a happy ending, flying off into the distance with his family. Amy resolves to always do her best and become independent reliable, and respected. Cue the credits on our fun little hour-long journey. Amy's theme song is My Sweet Passion, which is essentially about her obsession with Sonic, her desire to be truly seen by him, how they're the perfect pair, etc. I'm not too big a fan of how it ties into her character, as it kind of just ties into her obsession of Sonic. It kind of contradicts her story a bit too because she literally resolved to not need him it also doesn't really say anything about the actions she's taking in the game like how her views on fresh and family ultimately helped gamma and birdie oh well it's a really fun song to listen to regardless it's very bubbly but jazzy if you can't tell i'm not too great at talking about music so you just gotta trust me in this it's pretty fun next up we have amy's future faithful teammate mr big the cat the fishing simulator of the game, the most pointless character plot-wise, he's literally just here. He wants his frog, and he wants to go fishing. There really isn't much overall interaction with Big from the other characters as a part of the main story, except his appearance on the egg carrier with Sonic to fight Chaos 6. Uh, besides that, him and Froggy, his frog, offer very little to the story, besides Froggy being just a plot device. So the Night of Chaos's appearance, <laughs> It also traveled through the Mystic Ruins jungle where Big and Froggy live. Froggy's a weird frog because this dude just be eating stuff. So either he ate part of Chaos or Chaos is possessing him. Regardless, Big wakes up after Froggy's meal to see that he now has a tail and is acting weird. During Froggy's weirdness, he literally eats a Chaos Emerald and flees the scene. Thus initiating Big's story purpose, finding Froggy throughout various levels by completing fishing minigames. So Big goes through four levels, Twinkle Park, Ice Cap, Emerald Coast, and Hot Shelter. In all of them, you just fish. While we're on the topic of fishing, I will say that the fishing in this game is my least favorite fishing minigame in video game history. It's luck based. There's a trick to it. I figured it out because I had to do all four of Big's levels three times to get all the emblems. But it's just not fun. It's not enjoyable to me. And it, I wasn't even rushing through it. It just, it's not a great design. It was too much of a pace breaker for me personally. Anyway, let's get back to the story. So throughout Big's campaign, he also gets a Takal flashback where she first begins to bond with Chaos and learns about the Chaos Emeralds and Master Emerald. He learns that the Master Emerald is the controller of the seven servers. The seven servers serve the Master Emerald and so on. The seven servers being the Chaos Emeralds, if that makes sense. <laughs> After this cutscene, we get into the Chaos 6 fight where we have to fish Froggy out of Chaos while actively being attacked by Chaos. Once this is done, this is where Sonic comes in and defeats Chaos 6, then Knuckles defeats Chaos 6 again, and as far as Big is concerned, this is the end of his story. 
He gets his frog. He takes Tails' Crash Tornado 2, powered by the Chaos Emerald. This is important for later. And he takes his ass home. Roll the credits. Now, Big's theme song is actually pretty fun. It's literally about him chilling with his best buddy, Froggy, and just enjoying every single day, living life to the best of his ability. Literally just chilling. I can't hate on him. It has a really fun buddy type thing going on where it could be seen as Big and Froggy talking to each other or maybe Froggy talking to Big. I don't know which one is smarter. All right. Regardless, I can't hate on him, but I also don't have much to say about it as far as it relates to Big. He's a simple man, so I guess it goes, you know, perfectly for him. Now, you can probably tell with how brief I've been and how I talked about the fishing aspect of the game. But Big Story is my least favorite in the game and the least consequential of the six playable characters. I don't really enjoy it or his character, but I know he has fans out there somewhere. Maybe. Now that we're done with that character with literally no substance, let's move on to one who's complex, has layers, depth, tragedy, joy. E-102 Gamma. Before E-123 Omega existed, E-102 Gamma was him, allegedly. I knew of Omega first, so I'm just saying stuff right now, but that's besides the point. Gamma is the final character left to be covered in the story, but by now you all may have a little bit of a clue about what their story entails. If not, I got you. Gamma's story is quite literally the beginning of his life. In the beginning, Gamma was born. Eggman introduces himself as their creator and that Gamma is one of the E100 series. Now Gamma, he's programmed to strictly obey Eggman and carry out his every order. So Eggman quickly puts us through some training to see what we're capable of. And this takes us to Gamma's first level out of five, the final egg. This level is very brief and serves as the tutorial. Gamma's gameplay is run and gun with some platforming and time management elements. It can select and shoot at multiple targets at once to attack enemies. It can hover for a short amount of time with an upgrade and it can activate a speed mode after collecting enough momentum. I think it's pretty fun and it's the basis of Tails and Eggman's gameplay in Sonic Adventure 2. So I enjoy these levels a lot. After our training, Eggman quickly puts Gamma up against another E-Series robot, E-101 Beta, to see who is more powerful and deserves to stay aboard the Egg Carrier. So after Beta's obvious defeat, because I bought the game, it seems to beg Eggman to stay on board. Now we won't see Buddy for a while, but he definitely is still on board. Eggman gathers Gamma and three other E-Series robots and commands them to find Froggy. This leads us into the next level, Emerald Coast, where Gamma is lucky enough to be the one to find the correct frog. His reward is, you guessed it, a Tikal flashback. Woohoo, yeah! Here she shows the child singing in the chaos. They're just having a grand old time. They're just loving life, you know, just happy little guys. However, as Gamma tries to approach further, Tikal warns him. She says, don't do that. She then drops some lore that Chaos is the protector of the child. She hopes that she can convince her father to not disturb them and that they can live in peace. We know that didn't happen though. Continuing from the mission, Eggman is stored to see that Gamma has found the correct frog, sending the other three losers away in a fit of rage. So now Gamma's next mission is to get the bird from Amy who's imprisoned on board. Remember she got kidnapped earlier? Yeah. However, Gamma somehow gets confused. He walks into the wrong room and he sees Beta being dismantled. Although Gamma is a robot, the sentience granted to him by the Flicky that's powering him allows him to have some sort of feelings. You know, he's shocked, he's confused, scared, so on and so forth, etc. And this sentience and independence is further encouraged by Amy who put the words on him. He just might give Naruto a run for his money. So as you know, he releases Amy and Birdie, gets called to the sky deck to battle Sonic, gets saved by Amy, and then separates from the rest of the cast to go on their own mission. Destroy the other E-Series robots so that they can be free. Gamma also designates Eggman to be an enemy, removing any form of control that remained. This takes us to the remaining three levels, Windy Valley, Red Mountain, and Hot Shelter. And in these levels respectively, Gamma finds and destroys Delta, Epsilon, and Zeta, freeing the Flickies. This isn't the end though. As Gamma exits the egg carrier crash site, 
it goes up against a new and improved beta. The two begin to battle, and as it comes down to the final blows, it looks like Gamma has won once again, but Beta gets one last shot off at close range, making sure that Gamma will be destroyed as well. They both come out of the battle victorious. Surprise! The Flickies that were once powering the E-Series robots are now free and turn out to be Birdie's family. Remember those birds that were in the, the little necklace picture? Yeah, they were here the whole time. This is where Gamma's story meets up with Amy's as all three birds are reunited and the credits roll as the birds fly off into the sun. It's a pretty somber ending. And it's a, it's a little messed up, I do have to say. And of course, we have to talk about Gamma's main theme, which kind of makes the ending of its story a little bit somber because it's like devoid of character almost. It doesn't feature many lines because like I said, it's robotic in nature. And I believe the lines that it does say are just it's my pleasure ready to die and give me the emerald if anything it mainly reflects on eggman himself rather than gamma who is just a pawn and a prisoner it's not as upbeat as the other themes but that's not a complaint at all i think it fits perfectly with the darker tone that gamma story has i believe the song itself heavily features synths that have that iconic sega sound from the late 90s it's forlorn and kind of nostalgic. I like it. All right, now, if you're an amateur and you don't know how these Sonic games work, just know that just because you beat all the stories doesn't mean you beat all the stories. What if I told you there's a final story? So the final story unlocks after completing everyone else's stories in their entirety. This final chapter begins with showing us Tails' Crash Tornado 2 that Big flew back down to the Mystic Ruins and somehow landed properly in front of his little hut. Also, Eggman is flying towards it and a defeated Chaos, as well as Angel Island falling to the ground again. Remember when Knuckles finished his story, we were showing the island rising back up. But in reality, it went up for like a second and it immediately came back down. It's already a lot going on, but remember the Tornado 2 is powered by a Chaos Emerald and it also turns out that Knuckles did bring back the 6 Emeralds from Chaos 6 to Angel Island. Knuckles figures that the Chaos Emeralds have something to do with the island not returning to the skies and decides to bring in the Sonic for some advice. I'm really proud of him, you know, going to ask his friend for help. Truly a dream team. But before Knuckles can think any further on it, he sees Eggman laid out on the ground. And Eggman tells him that chaos is before we cut to Sonic chilling out in the ruins. Tails basically comes running and tells Sonic to get his ass up and go because Angel Iron is falling again. The two arrive on the scene of Knuckles now also laid out on the ground. Here we learn that chaos has gathered the six emeralds again and is on its way to gather the sevens from the tornado too. Before we can take action, we get the last to call flashback of the Echidna's attack on the master emerald, the chaos emeralds and the chow. It shows them seemingly killing the chow and rushing towards the emeralds, only to be stopped by chaos utilizing the negative energy of the emeralds to kill the echidnas that attacked. The call wakes up and rushes to the master emerald, pleading with it to seal chaos's power to stop the rampage. Now after this major lore dump, Sonic wakes up to a silly cutscene of a zoom in on Tails' face and the two head off to the tornado to get the emerald. Only they are too late as a giant pillar of water scoops up the emerald. Uh oh, <laughs> it gets real critical real quick as you get another render cutscene of the entire city being flooded by water coming from the city's pipes, sewers, whatever. And it gets hit by a tsunami from the nearby ocean too. It's just, it's water everywhere. Chaos's final form appears after emerging from a building. It's gigantic in size and is still entirely made of water. And he has like a little brain and some, you know, glowing eyes still. Eggman is a sore loser, but it's okay because we needed to see more of what Chaos is capable of anyway. So Eggman pulls up in his carrier, another one, attempting to blast the creature. But Chaos's draw is quick, okay? He said, not so fast. Eggman is blasted out of the sky immediately. It's almost comedic. So Sonic is fed up and ready to take action himself. To call appears once again, but this time she appears physically and in the present. She tells Sonic that he must be sealed away again, and by he, she means chaos, not Sonic, okay? 
Planet basically says that'd be stupid because Chaos would still be in turmoil. You know, he's still mad and he would just be trapped forever to eventually break out again. Chaos needs to be purified before he's sealed. So the gang appears and gives Sonic the seven Chaos Emeralds. Tails and Knuckles agree and inform Sonic that the positive energy of the Emeralds has yet to be used and it will be enough to defeat Chaos once and for all. Also, we get some cheers from the citizens of the flooded city. We can't see them anywhere at all, but whatever. Let's get into the boss fight. Now, this is my favorite boss fight in the entire game. It's super cinematic for the era that this game came from. It's intense. It's fun. And we get to hear the main theme of the game. Open your heart. The fight consists of chaos, shooting beams, creating tornadoes, changing some terrain. And a Super Sonic, we have to keep our rings up, of course, so we don't power down. Dodge all the attacks so we can keep our speed. And when we keep our speed, we get to get a little boost, charge up inside of Perfect Chaos, and knock his brain around, doing massive damage. So after doing this a couple times, there's also a second phase where the lyrics of Open Your Heart kick in. And then, you know, you beat Chaos again, he attacks faster, he attacks more, and he loses anyway because we are Super Sonic. And while being defeated, Sonic purifies Chaos with the positive energy of the Emeralds. And Chaos is, you know, he's chill. He's, you know, he's regular size again. He's like, dang, guys, my bad. So after the defeat, we see some chow running towards Chaos. And I'm pretty sure that these are the same chow that lived when Chaos back in the day. I don't know. They could probably be descendants. They're most likely descendants. Although chow can reincarnate, but that's besides the point. The call informs Chaos that the Chow stayed alive for generations and lived in peace with everyone now. She thanks Sonic and company, then rises up to the sky until they vanish, back to being sealed together in the Master Emerald. Or heaven? I don't know. The city is still damaged beyond recognition, but that's not even our problem. We can't do shit about that. So all's well that ends well, right? Yeah, I'm thinking all's well that ends well. So let's get them credits rolling for the final time, for real this time. So we can talk about Open Your Heart. This song is another staple of the entire series. It's one of the best rock songs from the series in general for me. The lyrics connect to the main theme of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and even Amy's character arcs. The common factor being that they will continue to have their own styles and actions that will only change for the better. For Amy, Knuckles, and Tails, it can also represent how they will continue or start to count on themselves first before considering counting on anyone else. I even use the title of the song itself to mean to open up your mind to thinking of other point of views, like the different uh, point of views of the story. Besides that, it's a lot of representation for Sonic and Eggman's rivalry and how his pure heart will save everyone whenever it's needed. Overall, the story for the game is simple and its strengths come from giving us character arcs that enable us to better connect and view this fun cast of characters. The format of the story can be a bit repetitive as everyone is essentially going through the same main events, but the moments where they do go off and do their own thing, their own gameplay styles, their own dialogue, their own introspective thoughts, it keeps it enjoyable and it makes it fine to replay it when you're doing the story, in my opinion. I think this exact format can easily be recognized in other Sonic games, just like Sonic Adventure 2, obviously, but also Sonic Heroes. Extreme, extremely in Sonic Heroes, Sonic Riders to some extent, Sonic 06, so on, so forth, etc. If there's more than just Sonic playable, it's pretty similar. I even Sonic Rush, maybe. Anyway, it's fun and does a good job of keeping you interested. And I think it was an amazing initial introduction using the voice cast that they had at the time to bring these characters to life in 3D for the first time. All right, so we're finally done trekking to the story. We've covered everybody. We've covered the last story, their theme song, so on, so forth, etc., etc. So now I do actually want to talk about the game itself. The section will mainly be about all the positives of the experience and give a generalized overview of the game's levels, the different play styles, the mini games, 
music and the process of getting all 130 emblems. The stages in order of Sonic's playthrough are as follows. Emerald Coast, you know, the beautiful beach, blue skies, bluer water. I think I said that backwards earlier, but whatever. It features what I think is the first instance of Sonic getting chased by an orca. And then we have Windy Valley, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a valley and it's windy. There's a tornado. You get swooped up by it and then you're in the sky and then you're on a like dying road spiral. It's pretty fun. Then we have Casinopolis, which is the obligatory Sonic Casino level. I'm not a big fan of it due to the pinball and ring requirement to finish the stage. I'll give it credit for being unique, though, but I'm not a fan of the casino levels and the pinball mini games and whatever in Sonic games in general. Then we have Ice Cap, which is an icy mountain featuring large icicles and a snowboarding section. It's pretty similar to the Ice Cap Zone in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I honestly just consider it the 3D version of that stage. The music isn't as great and it's, uh, it's not as cool, personally. And then we got Twinkle Park, which is a fun amusement park theme level that features the bumper car mini game, some roller coasters, and an overall fun theme. I'd probably go there, you know, I wouldn't get on anything, you know, I'd probably die, but the atmosphere is pretty cool. And then after that, we have the Speed Highway, which is a super highway that is also super impractical. I think its ridiculousness rivals that of the real US freeways. It's really fun though, and it has that iconic section of Sonic speeding down a building where you're dodging helicopters, breaking through glass, getting rings, dodging pillars, just a good old time. Then we got the Red Mountain, which is an active volcano that seems to be in the process of being industrialized for some reason. Near the end of the stages, we have Sky Deck, which has three parts, all aboard the Egg Carrier. We got Lost World, not the Wii U game, <laughs> but an ancient area featuring a stone water snake, a boulder chase sequence, and Mario Galaxy before Mario Galaxy was even thought of. And by that, I just mean it has some gravity stuff that we can do in the level towards the end. Then finally, we have the final egg, which is also a part of Eggman's base in the Mystic Ruins. It's got that traditional final Eggman stage feel from the Genesis games, and that's pretty much all the levels in a nutshell. All the levels are decently entertaining, even my least favorite of the bunch. Playing through them as different characters with their different play styles also keeps it interesting. I think it was definitely a good play to have Sonic play through the entirety of all the levels and then have the remaining characters play through either restricted areas, shortened paths, or entirely new areas within these same stages. Sticking with the theme of looking at stuff from other perspectives, this is also one of the best examples the game has to offer. The game also offers us an amazing soundtrack. It's like a mix of synth wave, rock, hip hop, and that trademark Sega late 90s sound. Honestly, just Sega sound of the 90s. Sega is its own genre to me. The character things have always been the most memorable for me, but the stage and hub world song shouldn't be ignored either. One half of them feature these airy, nostalgic tunes that just made me want to kick back and enjoy the music. I've actually listened to them a lot while working on this video. I'm really getting immersed. Like I'm, I'm in Sonic Adventure. This truly is a Sonic Adventure. The other half have some good songs too, but they're much more industrial sounding to go along with their settings, like the Final Egg, Speed Highway, the one, whatever. Overall, it's a fun listen, and to me, it's kind of the swan song of the old school sound of Sonic games since Sonic Adventure 2 shift in the music is basically still a blueprint of the music in the series going forward today. Just very heavily rock influenced and going away from the synth wave sounds of the Genesis era and the Dreamcast era. All right, so next up, we have the mini games that are featured within the stages. But I do want to take a quick second to mention the mini games that are unlockables. I don't know if these were in the original release, but it's pretty cool that you can play some of the Game Gear games. Not that I would torture myself like that, though. I'm not that big of a fan. Anyway, the stage sub games are snowboarding, sandboarding, bumper cars, and the sky shooter stages. 
there's also a mission section i would consider this a mini game essentially it has you going throughout the hub worlds picking up like tags which have the missions on them and they'll give you little hints of what you need to do within levels and it usually involves like a balloon or completing a task or something like that that however isn't necessary towards um the 130 emblem completions so i definitely didn't do all of them i honestly couldn't be bothered i did do some of them but i can't bring myself to do all of them i'm sorry anyway the mini games they're entertaining every now and then my preference is towards the sand and snowboarding mini games it's just something about being on boards man i i just love it put a sonic character on a board i'm playing it I didn't forget about the birth of the ultimate mini game that was first shown in Sonic Adventure though. The Chow Garden. Now, I've never spent too much time in the Sonic Adventure 1 Chow Garden, but I have an appreciation for it because it gave me the Sonic Adventure 2 Chow Garden. But I'll say that for another day. For those unfamiliar, you get to raise these little creatures called Chow that you can make stronger by letting them absorb the energy of wild animals. Think kind of like Cell from Dragon Ball Z a little bit just less uh, malicious. But no, for real, the animals can raise their stats so they can learn to do things like run, swim, fly, or have, you know, super strength, basically. This lets them compete and have better chances at winning in the chow races, too. I had to do this to collect the five emblems from this mini game. It was a bit of a time sink because I utilized a glitch to continuously use the same animal to max out the stats Instead of getting only a single use and having to run back and forth from level to child garden, level to child garden, race, level child garden, whatever. If they didn't want me to use it, they should have patched it out. So I definitely use that. And I have a child. I think I named him like Riz Jr. He's a baby. He didn't evolve, but, you know, he beat the grownups in all the races. So that's what really matters. So back to the emblems. Like I said, literally like five seconds ago, I collected all 130 of them, plus another 30 from getting all of them as the unlockable character, Metal Sonic, who you get for getting the original 130 emblems. This is where a ton of my additional playtime came from. The big time eaters being Sonic, Big, and Metal Sonic. Mainly because the two Sonics have to go through the entire stages three times each for each stage so that's like three to five minutes on each trial <laughs> for these levels it took a lot of time i had to take days of breaks before continuing also with big he's here because of the fishing mini game his trials are super annoying because you have to catch froggy for the initial mission, catch a 1,000 gram fish and froggy for the second mission, and then catch a 2,000 gram fish and then froggy for the third mission. It sounds simple, but please, please, I'm begging you, I'm pleading with you. You have to trust me. Because when I say that it is not, when it, it is not fun, it is not fun and it is not simple. I think my time on Big's four stages with the three trials each easily rivaled if it didn't surpass my time spent on both of the levels as Sonic and Metal Sonic. Now, this may sound like I suck, but I'm just going to go with that. It is luck based and I have never been one to be lucky. OK, everyone else's trials, though, were pretty simple. Tails has a 100 ring challenge, then a race versus a faster Sonic. Um, Knuckles has to find emeralds without hints and under a certain time limit. And then the same goes for Amy and Gamma for the 100 ring challenges and a time limit. So it's pretty simple for everyone else. Big honestly just has too much of a unique gameplay style for his missions to be the same as everyone else's. So it's basically everyone has the initial go through of the level, get 100 rings and beat the level, and then uh, time limit on the level or go fast. That's pretty much it. You know, besides Knuckles without using hints and his fun conditions. 
So the characters have much shorter levels already compared to Sonic. So them being tedious never really crossed my mind having to keep repeating them since I finished them so quickly. After getting all these emblems, the remaining ones come from finishing the character stories as well as the last story. So you get those ones automatically. Overall, it wasn't too difficult, just a little bit tedious as I started to lose my patience a bit towards the end. I definitely would not have gone for this as a kid, although I did do it with Adventure 2. And I would have avoided this purely because of Big the Cat's uh, missions. So I know I've kind of already been talking about what I don't enjoy as much in this game throughout the video, but I do still want to provide a little bit of a dedicated area for all that nonsense. Disclaimer, it really isn't that much compared to all the good things in this game. Firstly, it would have been great if the camera was just a little bit better to control than with the automatic settings. I rarely moved it because I knew it would be a battle to get it to work with me, so I usually just muscled through whatever jankiness came my way. It's a shame because I think the characters all control well for the most part, and a good camera would have added to that. And I also did play with a mod that quote unquote fixed the camera and it was still a battle to get it to just work correctly. So I don't even really think that's the mod's fault. It's still just kind of just an issue with the game in general. I see the control well for the most part though, because there are some times with Sonic, Metal Sonic, Tails, where I essentially lose control of them in certain areas. Either they come to an awkward stop, die, or go a little bit all over the place because they're falling through things, skipping over things, not hitting the mandatory areas, not getting enough air, whatever. Like with the homing attack for the Sonics, it's just not reliable as it is in modern Sonic games. Because it kind of feels like a gamble to chain homing attacks on enemies because sometimes you can still get hit by their spikes or you won't gain enough air to make it to a platform or you're too low. It just, I would just rather not do it. So I didn't. Lastly, I think the game would have benefited from giving Tails and Knuckles more stages since they are the next main important characters after Sonic within the story. The levels are just too short for me. And... Being short isn't necessarily bad because they are good, but more would have just been better. I may have mentioned this previously, but I did play through with some quality of life mods besides the cameras to make the experience more comfortable for myself, like fixing the voice acting, the sound and voice balance, making it widescreen. Nothing too insane that would alter the base game. But yeah, that's pretty much all I got. I I mean, I, I told you it wouldn't be that bad, right? It's like, you know, a paragraph. <laughs> so all of that is to say that Sonic Adventure is a must play for all Sonic fans. Whether you're new to the series, a veteran, ancient, retired, dust, Whenever you started playing it, if you haven't played Sonic Adventure, go ahead and play Sonic Adventure. I think playing in any form is acceptable, but like I said, I played on Steam with some mods to make the experience more enjoyable for myself. It's a fun experience that can be replayed constantly. It is a little bit tedious at points, but it has enough of a wide variety of gameplay styles, mini games, and missions to keep anyone entertained for hours. The music throughout the game is catchy, it's enjoyable, the character arcs might teach you something. It doesn't even matter how old you are, you know? Sometimes it takes people longer to realize things that people have realized while being younger. So at the end of my most recent experience with Sonic Adventure, I've collected 130 emblems, completed all stories, I completed a little bit of the missions, I unlocked the secret character Metal Sonic, and I believe I've spent maybe 40 or so hours playing the game again and getting these things but if we're including my time writing recording listening to the music that probably be another maybe 15 hours <laughs> i don't regret it one bit because this game is still one of my favorites after all this time and i truly enjoy getting my thoughts out as best as i can 
So when I have a ton of these and I can just point people to my channel if they want to get to know me and what I enjoy, I think it'll be pretty fun. So let me know if you have any thoughts or questions for me to further dive into about the game and my experience. Also, tell me your thoughts on it if you have any history with it. So thank you all for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe here on YouTube for more videos like this. I have the VODs of my live streams on here. And I also have highlights from the stream just in short form content. You know, if you like 60 second videos, 30 to 60 seconds, I got you. And you can also find me on twitch.tv and TikTok. All links are down below in the description for y'all to access. Thank you again for watching. I hope that you've enjoyed my time with Sonic Adventure. I will see you all later. Peace.